Roller coasters are some of the most well-known attractions in an amusement park, flaying guests in all directions at high speeds. Because it is something that moves, there are lots of physics equations that can describe the motion of a roller coaster. In this video, we will go over some basic physics equations and relate them to the motion of a roller coaster, using a basic track like so as an example. Starting off from the ground, the roller coaster needs to move first. This means that we need to consider Newton's second law and static friction. Starting with the second law, it states that the force of an object depends on its mass and acceleration, and this is the force that we need to move the roller coaster forward. It needs to overcome its static friction, which is the force that prevents movement when an object isn't moving. It is given by an object's normal force multiplied by its coefficient of friction, where normal force is the force that prevents solid objects from passing through each other, and the coefficient of friction is a constant dependent on the two objects touching each other. In the case of the roller coaster, its normal force will be just its weight, and its coefficient of friction is 0.7, the constant used for steel-to-steel -steel contact, since that is what the roller coaster and the tracks are usually made of. So to start moving, the tracks need to generate enough force to overcome the roller coaster's static friction. Now as we start, we need to consider the gravitational potential and kinetic energy of the roller coaster, which are given as such, with m being the mass, g being gravity, h being height, and v being the velocity. Gravitational potential energy is the energy an object has stored that can be released due to gravity, or in this case, falling. Kinetic energy is the energy resulting from an object moving, and these two forces will convert between each other. As the track moves the roller coaster, this force translates to kinetic energy, since energy, or work, is force multiplied by the distance the object traveled at. So, starting at the bottom, all we have is kinetic energy and no potential energy. As it moves up, it is converting the kinetic energy gained into potential energy, until it stops at the top, where its kinetic energy is all converted into potential energy. As it falls forward, all of the potential energy is converted back into kinetic energy, giving the roller coaster all of the velocity it needs. As it enters the loop, we have two of the most confusing forces in physics, centripetal and centrifugal force, which both use the same formula, where m is the mass, v is the velocity, and r is the radius of the circle it is traveling in. Those two forces only occur in circular motion, as centripetal force is a force that pulls the roller coaster around the loop, making sure it orbits around the loop, while centrifugal force is the force opposing it, which is the force that you feel as you are pushed against your seat. And of course, potential and kinetic energy gets converted back and forth here within the loop as well. Throughout the entire process, a lot of energy was lost due to air resistance and friction between the roller coaster and the track. The friction between moving objects is called the dynamic friction, which uses the same formula as static friction. But it has a different coefficient of friction for the same materials involved, which is 0.6. And for the air resistance formula, we won't get to it as it is complicated, but perhaps in a future video. And there we have it, we have made it to the end. Starting from the ground, we have static friction holding us in place as a force from the track gradually pulls us up, providing some velocity and therefore kinetic energy. It is converted into potential energy at the top of the hill and quickly converts back into kinetic energy as the roller coaster zooms down the ramp. At the loop, we experience the centrifugal force pushing us out as the roller coaster stays in the loop thanks to the centripetal force pulling us in. And of course, a lot of energy was lost due to dynamic friction and rear resistance. I hope that y'all have learned something interesting today. Thank you for watching and stay hydrated.